My name is Jacob, and I am a Norse pagan. So why do I say that instead of, hello, my name is Harberth, I am a Norse pagan? This actually goes back a little bit to when I started the YouTube, and I was like, well, I go by Harberth on Instagram, and I go by Jacob on YouTube, and I, you know, because it felt weird. I started making videos. Now, I started with, hello, my name is Harberth, and I, and I make YouTube videos or whatever, and it didn't feel right. It felt wrong in a way. Because for the longest time, I felt like I needed a pagan name. I felt like I needed that identity to go back to. Because Jacob is a Jewish and Christian name. I mean, the reason I'm named Jacob is because my mother looked at the Bible and she said, I like that name. That's why my, my, my name is Jacob. So I didn't feel like I should be talking as a Norse pagan. Um, so I want to explore that today. Why do I go by Jacob and yet still have the name Harberth? Um, so this is a much requested video. It's talking about, um, it's actually probably one of the most asked questions is... Um, how did I choose my name? Um, because I know a lot of us, when we first start this path, wonder how we choose our name. Should we keep our Christian name? Should we keep the names that our parents gave us? Um, so I'm going to be exploring three things in this video. One, do we even need pagan names? Do we, should we even change our names? Because I think there's a lot of you know, different opinion, opinions on this. Um, and then two, if we do decide that we need these names, like how do you choose them? Um, and then finally, we'll be exploring ideas for should we have a form of baptism? Should we have a form of changing our name? So there's a lot to talk about in this video, so that's why I brought coffee for me and coffee for the gods, because I don't want, I don't speak for the entirety of the community. I am not the voice of the community, but I figured I'd at least share my opinion on it, as well as it seems like the collective opinions of a lot of people within the community. So I put a poll out about three weeks ago asking this very question, should we have pagan names? Um, and I got a lot of different responses. And I, I, I kind of figured that because I myself am kind of up and down, whether we actually need them or not. Yes, when I first started this, I was like, no one's going to listen to someone named Jacob because that is a Christian name or Jewish name. So I'll call myself Harbors. And where I got Harbors, for people that are wondering, it's from Harbors the Old, which is a poem within the Poetic Edda. And Harbors just, to me, fits that wanderer look. Um, and in a way, I'm a ferryman. I'm helping people across the fjord into the Norse life. So yeah, in a way, it made sense. Um, so that's where the name Harvest came from. But I'm not even sure if that's really what I would go with. But I made YouTube videos, and I started going by Jacob because it felt wrong to say Harvest. Because that's not my name. I'm not directly from Scandinavia. My, my family probably hasn't lived there for a few hundred years. So why, why would I have a, you know, a Norse name here in America? So the, po the, the answers I got ranged from... Yes, I want a pagan name. I hate the fact that my name is John. You know, I hate the fact that my name is, you know, uh, Maria and things like that. And it's like, I want a name that is close to my religion. Um, but then I got just as many answers that were like, no, you have not, you know, you haven't earned that name. You're not from this country. Especially a lot, you know, a lot of people from um, Scandinavian countries were like, no, these aren't your names. And it's like, I, I understand that. It's like, we, you know, in a way it's appropriation. Um, so it's a very complicated topic. Um, but I think after reading everyone's responses and after reflecting on my own experiences, I think I am comfortable with the name Jacob because I, our names now, as Americans and as modern worshipers, our families were most likely Christian. Our family was most likely part of the, you know, the global Christianization or the, you know, the Muslim, you know, the Muslim world. Um, so a lot of our names come from our history. So my history is that my family were Christians. The path that I am forging is a Norse path, is a path forward into this pagan world. And so, I, you know, we're at the front. We're the vanguard of all of this. So if it shows, like, our histories, and it all started with Johns and Jacobs and Lisas and, you know, and Susans, uh, you know, if it shows it starts with all of that, you know, I feel like that's part of our story. You know, our Christian names are part of our story. So should we have them? I don't know. I can't speak for the entirety of the community. I think there's power in owning a name, and I think that goes both ways. I mean, if you name yourself Ragnar, you, by the gods, you better own that name. If you go up to people and you're like, my name is Ragnar, you better be a badass. <laughs> you know? um, so I think it's complicated, and um, I can't give you a, uh, a definitive answer, but I think the, answer, the real answer is somewhere in between. I don't think we should all be rushing to change our names. Um, but I think this leads into the second point. I think if we do have names... I don't think we should necessarily choose them um, because in history, the, you know, the, the, the breakdown of the Nordic name was you had your first name, 
which came from your family. Most likely you were named after an ancestor, whether it's your grandfather, your father. Um, so, you know, Ragnar Ragnarsson was a big thing back then, or, you know, uh, Bjorn Bjornsson. And then you had your last name, which came from your family name, which came from your, your lineage as well. So if you were the son of Ragnar, you would be Ragnarsson. And you see that now, even today, people with the last name Thompson or Wilson or, you know, Samson literally just means the son of Sam. And I know with daughters, it was Sovi Ragnar Dothir, um, I believe. I believe it's Dothir. A lot of Vikings, famous Vikings, um, had middle names or nicknames. So we have Ragnar Lothbrok Sigurdsson. And so Lothbrok, if anyone actually does the research, I think it was Shaggy Bridges or something of the similar style. Um, so it's not very intimidating, but even in the Vikings TV show, they go by Ragnar Lothbrok. They don't actually bring up his Sigurdsson um, because most people became more known for their nicknames because it's something they earned during their life. So Lothbrok came from a story how I believe he uh, courted Aslog uh, by wearing shaggy britches. Same thing with like Harold Bluetooth. We don't know him by his really his family name. We know him by Bluetooth um, or, you know, other names like Bloodaxe, Boneless, Ironside, you know. They all came from something they did or something part of their personality. So I think if we do have names, I think they should be given to us by our folk because that gives them power. And something I noticed after I had my first gathering, someone wanted to call me uh, Rao the Gothi, so Red Priest, because of my fiery passion and my red beard. And I was like, that makes sense. If people started calling me that, if that became like what I was known for was Rao the Gothi, I'm okay with that, actually. You know, it's like if I was known for my fiery passion and my red beard, that's something the community chooses. Um, so I think I can take more ownership of that because my folk chose it for me. This is a folk religion. It's a community religion. So I think the name coming from the community is something we should strive for. So if my name in its entirety, Jacob Ravagothi Hodson, I'm okay with that. And that shows that I'm, you know, it shows my history. It shows who my father was. It shows who, why I was named Jacob because I came from a Christian background. And then Ravagothi is the name of what people gave me. You know, that's just an example, but I think that there's power in that is, is getting a nickname from the community itself. Again, I'm leaning towards if we do have pagan names, we should get them from the community. My opinion, but I think that makes sense, and I think that's the natural progression of how I've seen things play out. Now, should we have a form of baptism? Sorry about that. That was really weird. Uh, they just started, like, hammering on the roof or sawing and like I was trying to get through it just to push through, but I just, I don't think I could have gotten through that. So we're just going to redo the section on baptism. Um, so one of the questions I got asked a lot, actually, when I did the poll is, um, how, should I be rebaptized? Should I be unbaptized? Or should there be a form of pagan baptism? And I thought that was an interesting question because it's not really something I've ever thought about. Um, but in a way it's a natural progression because it's not something historically like Jackson Crawford has a video on Norse baptism and basically says it's not there. <laughs> and um, he says there really isn't any evidence to suggest there was a form of Norse baptism just because there wasn't, it wasn't as recognized to say that it was a religion. It was just a way of life. Um, but I, what I will say is that uh, a theory about Mjolnir's existing is, is an indirect response to crosses. So basically like, you know, in a village, people would be wearing crosses if they were, you know, Christianized, and then people wearing Mjolnirs would be part of the old faith. So it was a way of showing, um, you know, who believes in what. So that was a direct response of the ancestors to a Christian thing, you know, in theory. So maybe this is our response. You know, baptism was used as a symbol of removing someone's faith and replacing it with another one. So maybe we also need that. Maybe we also do need a baptism to reverse the baptism. I haven't personally been baptized, um, but I know a lot of us have, and now we're converting to the old ways. So maybe you do need that. And again, I can't speak for the whole community. I don't think that's ever going to be a thing that is globally across the board that people are getting baptized. But if it's something you feel like you need to do um, to get rebaptized into a pagan name or a naming ceremony, you're free to write those things. You know, writing rituals is within our faith. There isn't a book of rituals you have to do or approved rituals. Because really my, my Volknut is in a way when I converted. So if I had a baptism, it was this tattoo. Because I went to the tattoo parlor knowing that if I get this tattoo, I'm going down this path. 
But again, that's not universal. Not everyone has to go get a bulk nut on their chest to say they're a Norse pagan or to con formally convert. It was just something I did um, to, you know, to symbolize it. Because I think symbolism is important. I'm not saying this was a baptism and I'm not saying that everyone should do it. But at the same time, I feel like all of us naturally find something to symbolize it, whether it's an offering or a tattoo or something we do. So again, I don't think baptism is going to be something that's you know, official across the board. There's not going to be much that's official across the board um, because it's just not our ways. But I think a lot of us in response to baptism have, have begun to pick up personal rituals to show that transitioning of faith. Um, but yeah, I hope this answered your questions. Um, let me know your thoughts on ideas for, you know, pagan baptisms, um, pagan names, how you found your name. If you think it's possible, you know, let me know your opinions in the comments below. And yeah, I'm just going to start making more videos. So until the haul, let's go.